Hey everybody, welcome back to Run and Gun. I'm JT and we are here in Lightroom. In my last editing tutorial for beginners, we really looked at some basic image processing. We played around with tone and with white balance and sharpening and cropping. And in this video, I want to take some of my landscape photos that I recently took and go through an entire import and we'll do some different edits. We'll use some of these other tools over here like spot removal and our gradient filters, radial filters, and our adjustment brush, which is very powerful. And I think it gets underused in Lightroom. So let's go through a whole import here. And I will start by going up to File, Import Photos and Videos. So after hitting that, this box will pop up that tells me to please select a source. And what I'm gonna do is add photos. And once photos are already on my hard drive, I want to add the photos to my catalog without moving them. I do have other options such as copy and move. Let's say the images were still on my SD card and they were not on my hard drive already. I would want to copy them over, but right now they are already on my MacBook. So I'm just going to add the photos to my catalog. So let's go to my desktop. Let's go to landscape. And as you can see here, a whole bunch of files just popped up. I have some RW2s from my Panasonic GH5 and I have some NEFs from my Nikon Z7. So it also looks like I have some movie clips in here that I was shooting for another tutorial and I don't want those imported. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the last movie clip right here. I'm gonna scroll up to the top. I'm going to shift select this first one up here and it will select everything in between. And then I can go through and I can un check those because I don't want all of those imported. And that's just a quick way to uncheck multiple photos or videos without going through and checking all of them. So that looks good. Let's go over here to file handling. I want to add these images to a collection just to help organize these photos. So I'm going to click add to collection and I'm going to scroll down here a little bit and I'm not seeing the collection. So let's go back a step and we're gonna create a collection real quick so I can import these right into a collection. And collections just help you keep your photos organized. And these are essentially like bins to store my photos. So what I'm gonna do here is create a collection. And collections are awesome because they help you organize your photo. It's like having filing bins and different file folders within these filing bins. So what I'm gonna do here is click this plus button. I'm going to create a collection set, which is like creating the main bin here. And I'm gonna call it landscape. And I do not want this inside my other bin. I'm gonna create a whole new bin. So I'm gonna click create. And now you can see this landscape bin here popped up. I'm going to select that. And as you can see, there are no photos in this collection set yet. Now, one thing I can't do is I can't drag a folder directly into this bin. Imagine taking a Polaroid photo and tossing it directly into a bin. That would get unorganized very quickly. So what I'm gonna do is create a folder within this bin. So I'm gonna hit the plus again. Now I'm gonna create a collection. Now this collection, like I said before, is like a little file folder inside of this giant bin just for extra organizations. And I can have multiple bins and I can have multiple files within the bins instead of just having a mess of photos filling up this bin. So I'm gonna call this all land scape photos. And this is a good practice just to keep all of your photos all together when you wanna find an entire import. So for the location, I wanna make sure this is checked that they are inside the collection set landscape. So I'll hit create and we'll open up landscape. There it is. And now you can see this little file folder inside of this bin and you can see all of these bins of photos inside my collection. So I think we are now good to go back to our import. So we'll go back to file import. And here is my option to add to collection. I will find not neon Spider-Man, but I will find my landscape bin. I will select all landscape photo and scroll down. I don't want to apply any develop settings or mess with the metadata right now, but this is an option. I can apply different sorts of edits to all of the photos upon import. If I were applying a similar edit to every photo, you have the option of doing that. I also have the option of adding keywords to my photos. 
if I want to go and search them later. So let's say I wanted to add landscape Colorado running gun. So I can just add these keywords and they'll add them to my photos for searching later. And I do this to all of my imports. So I think we're good to actually import these photos into Lightroom now. So we'll hit the import button. And this should just take a minute. You can see my import files at their current location is loading and you'll see all of these files start to pop up, which is awesome. So we'll give Lightroom just a second to open up all these photos. All right, so I'm here in our library tab. All of our photos have imported. My MacBook is chugging just a little bit. You can probably hear that fan running. Hopefully not because I just got a new mic and I'm testing it out right now. So hopefully it's a little more directional and it sounds a little bit better for future videos. So let's just select one of these photos. Then we're going to go up to our develop module, click that, and our photo should pop up here. I'm going to hit this little triangle here on the left, close out this tab on the left. I really don't need all this navigator information. So now I have a little bit more space to work with. So this photo looks pretty decent over in our histogram. I'm going to turn down some of our highlights, I think. So let's scroll down here turn down our highlights. Now that looks pretty good. I don't want to lose any of the highlights over here in these rocks. I really want to just bring down the sky. Now in our toning menu over here, you can see that when I pull a slider either to the left or the right, it affects the whole image. Now Lightroom has some really great tools if I want to go in and I want to edit a little more carefully instead of just editing globally, which means if I take a slider and I slide it left or right, I'm affecting the entire image. Now, if I wanna just edit locally and select just a portion of the image, I can go ahead and use one of these tools over here. I know we talked about the radial filter. Let's try our gradient filter and see what I come up with. I wanna darken these clouds a little bit, so I'm gonna click at the top and drag down. And I'm gonna turn my exposure down just a touch turn my highlights down. I do want the whites to pop just a hint and I want the sky to be nice and blue. So I'm going to mess with my white balance here, drag it to the left. And you can see the issue is here with this, these rocks up here are starting to turn blue and that's not something I want. Now the gradient filter is great if you have a flat horizon. In this case, I have these rock formations that don't really work well for this tool. So I'm gonna click and delete, and then I'm gonna use this brush over here, which is the adjustment brush. I can click it or I can hit the letter K. Now I can actually go in here and I can paint what I want to be affected. So I'm clicking, I'm dragging, and nothing seems to be happening. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on this show selected mask overlay, and now you can start to see where I'm painting at with my brush. Now, this can get kind of tedious with a small brush, so I might go in here with a big brush and paint in the majority of the sky and then go ahead and erase some of these parts in a minute. Now let's go down and check out some of our brush settings. We have the option to change the size of our brush. We can erase and we have different brushes that we can set to different sizes in case we want to go back and forth. So right now I'm going to zoom in a little bit, hit Z, and click and drag around. And now I'm going to go in and really make sure that I'm getting these detailed areas around here. This brush is feathered pretty well, so I'm not too worried about any ghosting. I'm just going to do a rough paint job in here, and I will fast forward you guys to when this is finished. All right, so we have our sky painted in. I'm gonna go in here and make some adjustments and do some erasing. All I have to do is click the word erase there and go through and do some simple erasing around the edges of the rocks here. And again, just wanted to show you guys that that's an option. You don't have to undo all of it. You can just erase. And I will be back again when we're done erasing around here. All right, so now we're done erasing. You can see that I have my whole sky selected and we went through and erased around the rocks and now I can go through. Let's turn off selected mask overlay and now I can actually see what's gonna happen when I start making edits and processing this image. So here we go. This looks a lot better 
Now I can actually darken the sky. It looked pretty stormy when I was out there. So my goal with photo editing is to always bring the viewer back to what I thought the scene looked like. Now you can see we have a little bit of ghosting here around the edges from where I erased. And I'm gonna go in here and make sure I paint these areas in because ghosting looks pretty bad and it's one of the first signs that your photo was edited and usually not edited very well. So I'll go in here, I will do some touch-ups, make sure I use a smaller brush, go around these edges, and I don't want these white spots and lines and glows around the edge. So that's looking much better. This can be a little bit of a time-consuming process, but it pays off in the end when you have a photo that looks like it was professionally edited. So we'll just go through here, make sure that this ghosting kind of disappears. I know it was really bad right here in this larger rock. Now it's okay if you see our brush overlap this rock a little bit. It's gonna look much better than having that nasty glow around the edge. So let's zoom out and look at that. That looks much better. Go in here and just do some little spot edits. That looks pretty good to me. Another thing that I was trying to do was turn down the white balance just a touch and make it a little bit cooler. That looks pretty darn good. And let's also add some contrast. These clouds, they were pretty contrasty, and I'm gonna push them just a little bit and kind of exaggerate how stormy it was. Now, look at that. That is a huge difference. I'm gonna hit done, and then we'll go to the before and the after, and that is a huge difference, and that's something I couldn't do just by pulling down my highlights and turning up my contrast. Look, at, you can see these sliders here are my global sliders for the entire photo. So let's put our highlights back to zero. I'm gonna go back to our adjustment. So what I'm gonna do is hit that adjustment brush and this little dot right here, I'm gonna select that and you will see my selection pops up and I'm gonna mess with the highlights and turn those down a bit right there. That looks good, so I'm gonna go back, hit done, and all of my brushes are now zeroed out, and here is our before, our after, what we have right now, and all of my brushes are still free to turn up and turn down. Again, I can over-exaggerate those clouds, I don't wanna do it too much. And now I can go in here, I can select each of these rocks if I want to make any adjustments to these rocks, maybe I will Try out this gradient again, drag it in from the bottom. Maybe I'll turn down the exposure a touch, turn up the contrast, just to kind of have your eye go towards this middle part of the image just a touch. And that looks good. Let's drag this gradient out a touch more. There we go. And now I can do some global edits. I'm gonna turn up my exposure just a hair mess with my highlights, turn my shadows up a bit so I'm not losing any of the detail in these shadows or in the rocks here. I really wanna keep those. And remember, one of the things that's really easy to do is to push your image too far. I'm gonna keep making adjustments here as I talk so you can kind of follow along. Make these rocks a little more pinkish orange because they were very orange in person. But as I was saying, one of the things you don't want to do is you don't want to over edit and you don't want your image to look like it was over edited. Photo editing and processing and toning is a lot of tweaking and a lot of pushing a slider too far and then dragging it back until it looks just about right. And it's a lot of playing around and just messing with finding out what works and what doesn't. There's no correct way and there's no wrong way to edit a photo. So right now I'm gonna add some of these blacks back into the entire image, again doing a global edit to our entire photo here, that's looking pretty good. I might add a touch of clarity to the entire image, and it wasn't very hazy here, but I like adding a touch of dehaze to warm up the image and add some contrast. And you can see we have some of this ghosting popping up around these edges here. That'll start to happen if I crank clarity way too much, you'll start to see too much of the edges. And I can go in there with an even smaller brush as I need to and just keep kind of burning the edges in there. So this is looking pretty cool so far. I'm gonna turn up 
my vibrance a touch, and maybe I want this rock in the background to pop out a little bit more. Maybe I want this rock on the right to pop out a little bit less. So let's do some more adjustments. Select our adjustment brush, and this time I'm going to paint in this rock here. It's not painting, so I'm gonna select show our mask overlay so I can see what we're painting here. And we'll just go through, we'll do a rough paint in here. I can use my bracket keys to make this brush bigger. So we'll scroll around here, paint in this rock. And I'm gonna paint this one over here as well because it's connected. And I think that looks pretty good. And let's start making some adjustments. Again, I'll unclick this. And let's turn up our exposure just a bit. Like that, we'll have this pop out a touch and we'll have this rock a little bit warmer. That looks good. Turn down the highlights a hint. Oh, that's actually not doing too much. Let's turn down our exposure a touch. I want this rock in your face, but I don't want it to take away too much from this rock in the background. And again, my MacBook's chugging a little bit. You can see that pinwheel of death coming up every now and then. I'm gonna turn down the blacks and crush some of these shadows. That's starting to look a little bit better. And it looks like I can add a little more paint or paint in this mask a little bit better up here because it is a little bit feathered up here towards the top. So let's actually bring up our shadows a hint, bring down our blacks to really get some of this texture in here. And then I'm just gonna hit a touch of dehaze. That looks pretty darn good. Now, if you wanna see what your image looks like before and after your masks, I can go in here and scroll down to this little toggle switch here and I can see what it looks like before my masking and after my masking. So all that does is turn off my brush adjustments. So that looks pretty good. I'm gonna hit done. And so here's our before image if I hit the backslash and here is what we're working with right now. We're looking pretty good. Now I wanna go through and I wanna bring out some of the detail and brighten up these brushy areas down here. Let's see if our radial filter works in this case. I can click, drag, I can rotate this filter if I need to. I can grab the any of these edges and it's not quite doing what I want it to. So this would probably be another case. Let's delete this radial filter and just another case of where I would use my adjustment brush. So once again, I will paint in this area and I will be right back when it's done. Now, just one little trick you can do here if you don't like seeing this red overlay and if it looks ugly to you and it doesn't work well for you, you can always shut off your show selected mask overlay and you can make the adjustment that you wanna make and then as you're painting, it will paint that adjustment on. So let's say I just wanted to turn up the exposure. You can see the exposure getting turned up in the areas that's selected. So I can go in and I can just paint now with the exposure essentially. And this is just like a giant exposure brush where everything I paint, all of the adjustments right now, just the exposure, gets turned up. Now this is pretty fun. Just be, uh, be aware that your MacBook or whatever laptop you're working on might chug a little bit. That's usually a tool I'll use mostly on a desktop. Let's turn down our exposure a touch, turn up our shadows just a bit. And there are some whites in here, they're hard to see. So I'm gonna turn those whites up just to get some contrast in here and make sure we still have some deep, rich black values in there. And I wanna turn up our saturation here just to make sure we're getting some deep, rich greens and turn up that clarity a little bit right there. Now, that looks pretty good to me. Let's turn that off and turn it on. And you can just see we made 
some of the white areas pop a little bit. We crush some of those black values a little bit. I'm actually going to turn up the exposure a touch more. Yeah, about one and a half stops looks good. And I'm going to turn up our white values a little bit more just so we're getting some more contrast in here. And I want those greens to look very green, so I'm going to add a little bit of warmth and a little bit of green to the tint and hit enter. It's loading again. Make sure we hit done. And that's looking pretty good. That is a very, very basic edit in here. I would probably go in and touch these areas up just a little bit. As I told you in the last tutorial, I always go in and I always add a little bit of detail and always add some sharpening to all of my digital images here. So I'm going to add some sharpening. Make sure we get our details in here. I'm going to hold Alt to turn the image black and white so I can see what I'm doing here a little bit better. It's just easier to see when you're sharpening and not having to be distracted by colors as well. Now this image isn't too noisy, so I'm going to turn this down a touch. We're shooting at 100 ISO on the Nikon Z6, so not a very noisy image at all. Let's see. This looks pretty good. Now we have these spots up here. I think those were birds, and you can't really tell they were birds. They just kind of look like dust. So let's do some spot removal, and we'll use this tool up here. I have the different brushes. I have cloning, where we'll just copy and paste one area of the image over to another area of the image. And then we have the option to heal, which will take parts of the image around what you're trying to heal and not really copy and paste, but use its own smart formula to figure out how to get rid of that spot. So let's try the heal tool and see how that works. I'm just going to click over here. It's going to take some sampling from over here, and that looks pretty good. And let's just go through and we'll click on all of these birds, and we will make them disappear because I don't need these birds. That looks good. And click. And I will go through here. I'll click all these birds, and again, we'll come back when this is done loading. Okay, so those are some basic spot edits to this image. You can see all of my birds are now gone. There's a couple down there. Not too worried about it for the sake of this tutorial. I'm going to hit done. I'm going to zoom out, and that worked pretty well. I'm kind of liking how this image turned out so far. Again, minus this ghosting where if I were going to print this image out, I go in here with a very small brush and probably spend about 20, 30, maybe 45 minutes going through and actually getting a very precise selection. But for the sake of this tutorial, that looks pretty darn good. Now, I also have the option of going through and making some other edits, like using my HSL color tab. I'm going to hit HSL here, and I have the option of editing my hue, my saturation, and my luminance of all of these different hues. So, let's just go to our luminance right now. We'll start there, and luminance basically just means brightness. So, I can change the brightness of everything that is red. That actually looked pretty good. I like that. And I can change the brightness of everything that is orange. I can make orange brighter or darker. I like making that brighter. That looks good. Same thing with our yellows. And let's mess with our greens. I might want to brighten greens up a little bit. And we'll play with that. That looks good. And maybe some of these greens are actually a little bit blue. Oh, we're probably going to be messing with our sky with our blues and our aquas. Yep. So another option I have here is this target selection tool. So I can click that. I can click a part of my image and drag up or down. And Lightroom will actually figure out the color of the pixels that I'm dragging up and down. And it will move all of the appropriate sliders the appropriate amount. And this is awesome if you don't want to go through here and guess what color something is. I can just select a green area down here and drag up and you can see that aqua is moving a little bit so there's a little bit of aqua in our greens that looks good now I can go to the saturation tab same thing as luminance I can click and drag if I want this more or less saturated that looks absolutely terrible so we're gonna bring our saturation back and I might actually 
turn up our saturation a bit, turn down our saturation in our greens. We don't want them to be too distracting, but we want to have enough contrast. And you can see greens have a little bit of yellow in there. And I'm going to turn down the saturation of the blue in the sky. That's just a bit too much. And let's bring it back a touch. That looks pretty good. And then we have our hue tab right here where I can actually change the hue of something altogether. So I can take anything that's orange and shift it over to red, or I can shift it to yellow. And that makes our mountains look a little bit sick. I don't want to do that. Or I can take our blues and shift my sky green like there's a giant tornado coming. Or I can make our sky purple, which also looks pretty terrible. Some people like to go in and they like to make their plants blue. So if I want to take my plants that are green and I want to make them blue, which people like to do for portraits for some reason, and just give it that kind of portrait moody look, we can do that here. And that is about all for our HSL tab right here. We can close that out. And that is a very basic edit. I might go through and I may also add a vignette so I can go to effects, post crop vignette and drag this just a hint. Make sure our midpoint, now midpoint is actually the midpoint of your vignette where it falls off from the corners to the center of your image. And adding a vignette, if I turn this on and off, you can see it really directs your eye towards the center of the image. And again, just like any effect in Lightroom or photo processing at all, you don't want to take it too far and make it look bad. That looks really bad. I usually take it to a certain value and realize that value is way too much. And I'll bring it back about half because as a photo editor, I know this effect is on the image. I'm also going to feather this quite a bit. That looks better. I know I applied this effect to the image, but I don't want my viewer to know that I applied this effect to the image. I kind of want it to be a subconscious, your eye makes its way towards the center. And this is just a tool to get the point across. So this image looks pretty decent. I'm actually going to see what this looks like in black and white just for fun. Hit black and white wait for my MacBook to process this. That looks pretty cool. I really like the contrast. I like the tones in here, the really dark tones, the lighter tones in the rock. It's actually kind of neat looking image. I'm going to hit V to go back to color. I can toggle black and white in color by hitting the letter V. We're back to our color image. And just a little tip, I talked about this in a contrast editing hack video. It's really neat to go back and forth between color and black and white just to see what your contrast looks like. I do a lot of my contrast and sharpening and dodging and burning in black and white and then I will come back to the color version and it usually looks a lot better. That's a great way to get some on point contrast. And now I'm going to go through, I just noticed our color profile was flat. I'm going to see what the landscape default looks like. That's a bit much. Let's see, portrait. That looks pretty good. We have some nice saturation. We have some nice contrast. Let's see what standard looks like. Standard looks about the same as portrait, but I think this looks pretty good. I'm going to hit shift tab to fill up the screen a little bit more. And I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to hit backslash. We can see our before image looks pretty darn flat as a raw image here. And there is our after image after we've done some edits. I think that's it for this Lightroom tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed that. And I hope you learned the difference between global editing and going through and actually making some minor local adjustments to different sections of your image that really just opens up some of the possibilities of what you can do in Lightroom. And you don't always have to drag everything into Photoshop and make a bunch of layers and masks and things like that. You can do a lot of it right here in Lightroom. So that is all for this video. Thank you guys for joining me. You are awesome. I will see you guys next week. Hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe to see more videos and hit that notification button because we all know when you subscribe, YouTube doesn't always show you all of my videos. Drop me a comment down below of any other Lightroom tutorials or Photoshop tutorials that you might wanna see and I'll see you guys next weekend. So until next time, 
get out and go shoot.